everybody's gone crazy Where have all the dreamers gone? Or have we all just got lazy? What's going on? What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Progressive Action TV show. We was having a little issue um, streaming uh, at the same time with, with Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. I think it's something going on with Twitter and uh, YouTube. So right now, we only just going live on Facebook. But welcome to the show. Look, I need you guys to share out the show. The show is very important. We're going to talk about a few things, a few important things. Um... As you guys know on the screen, um, feel free to donate. That's our cash app on the screen. We have PayPal within the link of this uh, video. We also uh, have something called Patreon also within the link of this video. But like I said, we need uh, donations are greatly appreciated. So make sure you donate to the show. Um, soon you guys are going to see... Uh, these flyers all over the property. Um, like I said, share out the show. This is this is how you can reach us through Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and our email. Um, feel free to reach us here uh, and share it out. You know, if we don't share out the information and make people aware of what we go through, then we're doing this for nothing. So continue to share out the show. Uh this Saturday, we have a meet and greet brunch at Sugar Hill Restaurant. It's going to be from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, the address is 217 Nostrand Avenue. We will be giving out some information. We will be talking about how to fight bosses, um, workers' comp information, and FMLA information, and other types of information. So we will be giving you guys information we will be giving you guys something um, to leave with. So it's very important that you come to our progressive action brunch. Also this month, as y'all know, is Black History Month. Uh, we have a Black History Month celebration at 150 Malcolm X Boulevard um, in the senior citizen 
um, building. We actually celebrating with the seniors. Uh, like I said, that's February 27th, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Food will be um, served. There will be music. If you want to donate your time, if you want to donate a dish, if you just want to come by and, and give back to the community, feel free to join us in that. It's very important that um, you guys come out and support that also. And I just want to point something out for Black History Month. Uh, this is Ruby Bridges we got on the screen. She's the first black woman to ever attend an integrated elementary school. And she's only 62 years old. And um, the post said, let that sink in. It's very important that we uh, examine, you know, the history that us as uh, black people have been going through in this country. And just to say that this Miss Bridges is um, only 62 years old, it shows you that we have not really gotten that far and we not that far removed from racism and we not even that far removed from um, slavery, chattel slavery, when you think about it in a number of years. Um, we got so much further to go. We got so much further to do. And we got to stop acting as individuals and start acting as a community um, moving forward. But it's going to take some work. It's going to take a lot of work, a whole bunch of work. Now, um, before I get into the news, um, some people like to say, you know, Tramel, you are the media. And, and, you know, I'm just like the media. You know, I got a platform like the media, whatever the case may be. This is the issue. I'm not the media. What I do is that I use the media as a tool. That's what I do. There's a big difference. Nobody controls my message. Nobody tells me what to do. Nobody tells me you only could talk about this story right here. Nobody say that you only could do a story for this amount of time. Um, nobody could. I don't have to go to an editor to get approval of whatever I want to do. I talk what I want, um, when I want, and how long I want. So I'm not the media. The media is controlled by the top 1%. Nobody poor owns the media. The media have to put out a certain type of message to keep things going. To, 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 they, they, a lot of people don't even watch the news because they feel the news is negative, but that's what the media is. The media is not controlled by us. If you deal with any reporters and you think that, uh, our issues, like you look at the, the issues that women have been facing on this job for the past 50 years, you would think that those would be big stories. You would think that the media would go out there and, 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 and take those stories, but they don't because they don't want to get our stories out there. They don't care about the average working man or working woman, um, period. So, I know some of you guys be mind boggled to be like, why the media won't take that? Or let's go to the media or let's do that. Um, they don't want to take a lot of our stories. And, and, and that's the truth. For some strange reason, they do not want to take um, uh, a lot of our stories. So that's why I created, or one of the reasons I created the Progressive Action Platform was because we need a, we need a platform to get our stories out there where we can control our message fully, where we could talk about our issues fully with no time restraint, no nothing. Um, so it's very important uh, to understand that. That's why I, I tell you guys, and I'm going to put it back up there again, it's important that you guys uh, donate to the platform. If you got Cash App, donate to the platform because nobody don't control our message, um, and we do fight for the members. Now, with that being said, of me not being the media, but we do have a voice. We have a powerful voice within this organization, and our voice is growing um, all across the country. Now, as far as with this this um, FTP, now we go we go we we go stop we go stop letting the media control. The narrative all the way. We not go call them FTP because that was that was the subject of their of their their rally, and that stands for "fuck the police." For those who don't know, 
but the media just like to call them fuck the police, right? That's not the name of these guys. The name of these guys are called decolonize this place. Now, why won't the media put out decolonize this place as the name of this group? Why? Because this, this country was built on colonization. This country was built off of being stolen from the Indians. Um, Africa as well. Africa was colonized. That's how we ended up in chattel slavery. So why would the media put out a narrative of decolonize this place? Fuck the police sound more exciting. It makes them sound radical. You know, for some reason, radical is the new curse word. Radical is the new curse word, especially when you got black people involved. Like some people say, oh, he's too radical. What does that mean? What does that mean exactly? He's too radical. Um, uh, especially like when you're dealing with, like I said, people of color, I get accused of being too radical. What does that mean? Mike Quill built this union off of radicalism. This is a fact. But radical, when, when, when a, 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 a Caucasian calls a black man radical, he really want to call him you know, the N-word. That's what it really is because you can't explain why you wouldn't want someone to be radical. Everything that was built in this country worth fighting for was built off of some type of radicalism. But as soon as a person of color um, do something or go against the status quo, we get fingers pointed at us as being radical as is, as if it's a curse word. You know what? I wear my radicalism proud. Let's see what you guys saying on Facebook. I wear my radicalism very proud. Matter of fact, let me uh let me get this. I ain't even put my name on the screen. Put my name on the screen. Yeah, I wear my radicalism very proud. So like I said, the media like to control the message. They like to uh do whatever's gonna do for them to get views. Now everybody's saying FTP, you know, it's about disrespect being disrespectful to police and damaging MTA property, but they actually have a message. And this is a sign from one of their events. It says, Poverty is not a crime. The subway should be free. People's Power Assemblies, New York City. And the other sign behind um behind that one says, Abolition now. Abolition is black liberation. People's power assemblies, New York City. Now, why wouldn't the media want to get that message out there? This fight is really about oppression. This fight is actually about police targeting uh, people of color in the subway station. This happens all the time, even with me. And I may have said this before. When I'm in uniform, I get a whole bunch of head nods from the police. When I'm not in uniform and I'm riding the system, they look at me a total different type of way. Now, if it was about policing and and and, and courtesy and, and professionalism and respect, I think that's what they the acronyms on the side of their cars, courtesy, professionalism, respect. If it was about that, whether I'm in uniform or I'm not in uniform, I should get the same respect as if I was in uniform. And that doesn't happen. And how do I know? Because I see it every single day. Every single day, I see it. It's no secret. Um, it happens, and 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 it is what it is. It is what it is. the 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 issue is that now people take things too literal. Decolonize this place says they want police out of the subways. Okay. They don't really mean that. What they really mean is that they want the police away from the platforms to stop policing poverty because it seemed like they're only targeting one group of people. And time and time again, we have seen this on video. We have seen a couple of months ago of a, a, a white police officer punching a black youth in the face on the platform for no reason. And, and just recently, a video popped up yesterday or the day before yesterday of... Uh, a, a black child, it appears that she's a high school student, 
was attempting to get home and uh, take the train home, and the police officer stopped her. Matter of fact, let's get into the video. We're going to watch this video, and we're going to come back. Uh, we're going to come back to that. So let's let's watch this video real quick. <laughs> You're no longer welcome in the subway system. She put hands on this this young this young this young child. She's a child. She's not even a woman. She's a child. Um, you could tell that this child was very well spoken. Um, you could tell that she's educated, and she's not stupid. She wasn't there to start any trouble. Um. She was there to go home. And the fact of the matter that she was stopped, and we're going to go by the optics. You have a you have a white police officer targeting, targeting a young black female. How many times do we have to see the same story before we get upset, before we get angered, um, before we take action? Um... Matter of fact, let's call someone real quick. We're we going to call someone who's familiar with uh, the area there. Give me one second. We're going to call someone who's familiar with the area there. Let me see. I hope they pick up because it took us so long to start the show today. Um, let me plug this up real quick. Let's see if they pick up. Hey, what's up? This is Tramel. How you doing? I'm fine. We live on the show. Um, how you doing today? I'm okay. Trying to get over my clothes, but I'm good. <laughs> okay, I, I sound like sound like you're a little sick. Um, yeah. Yeah, we we I, I you know I posted the video up on my Facebook page, and I see that you mm -hmm. left a comment, um, saying that you actually worked that station, and you actually seen that cop before. Yeah, I worked on um, Avenue um, maybe like two or three weeks ago. And usually I always keep my gate locked. And it seems that the kids, they were just coming from school and they directly go straight to the gate. So I'm assuming it's probably usually open. So the officer, I guess she must have seen that. And she came and approached me and asked me if I could keep the gate open because um, they, you know, they're there for crowd control and, you know, they want to keep the kids moving. So, because they usually fight and stuff, I guess, on the platform or in the station, so they just want to keep them moving, so they keep the gate open. 
So I explained to her, I'll leave the gate open while you guys are here. But once they leave, I'm locking it back because, you know, they're supposed to be using their Metro cards. So, you know, I was kind of confused when I saw the video because I'm like, they usually just let the kids go. So I don't know why she gave, you know, the girl a hard time. Yeah, and then we hear, we hear, we actually hear in the video, the girl say, you know, you let a whole bunch of people through. And that seemed pretty yeah. consistent of, you know, what you said as far as like they say leave the gate open at that, at that station. Yeah, because they want to get them going. So I don't know what, you know, I don't know what transpired before the video started or whatever, but either way, she's still a child, you know. She, if you're there, the officers, you're the one who are there to give authorization for them to go through. So if it's after school hours, you know. You should have just let her go. Now, let me ask you something. Just out of curiosity, what is the, the, the racial makeup of the kids that you see that pass through that station? Well, that's not my station. I only worked there overtime that day. But from that day, it was usually like Mexicans, white, Asians, a sprinkle of, of African-Americans. Okay. But, but you- it's mostly, mostly, yeah. Hispanic, Asian, white, Jewish. Yeah, because I, 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 I work that station. I mean, I don't work that station, but they be on my platform. I work that line. And mm-hmm. blacks are the minority there. You could count the amount mm-hmm. of blacks on your hand at that station. Yeah. Um, yeah. And like you said, it's, it's uh, you got the Russian kids, you got the the Jewish kids, you have the, you have the, a lot Jewish. of Asians, um, you have everything, but a hand, you have a handful of blacks, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. that cop definitely, because I don't think the girl was lying. She, um, they definitely, she, def- the cop definitely let other people through the gate, and for some odd reason, stopped her. Yeah, and, and it seemed like targeted her in some form or fashion. And it's very important that, you know, us as 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 um, employees of 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 the MTA and and black people, we must speak up against uh, injustices like this. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, I can understand if you're going to stop kids and do it all across the board. But if you're going to let some in and don't let others in, then, you know, it's not fair, especially, you know, where race comes involved, you know? Yeah. Either you let them all in or you don't let none in. Let them all swipe their metro cards. They get cards from school. You know, us as transit employees, we're not allowed to let them in. The gate is supposed to be locked. They're supposed to swipe their metro card. And that's just a safety issue. God forbid something happens to any of those kids. The first thing they're going to say is who let them in. You know, so, but as police officers, you're there for a reason. You're there for crowd control. And that's what she told me the day I was there. She's there for crowd control. And, you know, to leave the gate open to let them all in. So I don't understand what happened between then and now. And the girl said on the video, you just let all these other people in. So why are you not letting me in? So, you know, it just seemed kind of unfair. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy because whenever we ask the, the cops to remove homeless people out the, out the station or off the train, the first thing they do is say, that they can't do that. They can't. Mm-hmm. But, but this, if they're sitting out, we can't remove them. Exactly. But this cop can remove this black youth from um, the station with no recourse. Like she didn't even think about mm-hmm. it. And, and the other cop exactly. sat there and was and was complac- complacent in that mm-hmm. also. You know, she she uh, she co-signed it, basically. She could have stepped in and yeah, said, you know, exactly. it, it wasn't even like it was a group of children. It was one child. You know, yeah, so exactly. What, 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 What's it, what, the real reason for, you know, injecting her from the system? There, there's no reason. I mean, we know what the reason is because she was black. Mm-hmm. She the, automatically when 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 white police officers pick on black people, they know that we don't have no community support. They know that mm-hmm. if they mess with other communities, such as the Jewish community, because the Jewish community, they, they don't care. Shut it down. Exactly. Yeah. They don't care what color you are. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not one of them. It's an issue. They don't care if you white, black, yellow, purple. They have no, um, they have no issue, uh, you know, supporting supporting their people. And that's what's missing in our people. 
But when we try to do that, yeah. you know, they we get the oh, uh, you guys trying Why to be covert races. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We ain't playing the race card. You know, we just mm-hmm. we want to have it like other everyone else have it. You know, but exactly, we got to be smarter. We must be uh, more aware. We must know the history, and we must expose events like this time and time again. Yeah, no matter how much time. it takes, we have to talk about it and expose events like this. Well, thanks for calling. I mean, well, I called you, but thanks for um, get, <laughs> <laughs> th- thanks for giving us your side of the story. And, yes, no problem. And Thank you, you. And you keep up the great work, and you feel better. All right. Thank you. All right, Bye-bye. No problem. Okay, that was uh, that was Miss Darby. Now we gonna we gonna get into someone else because and you know she's like the first lady of the Progressive Action Team. Um, she 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 felt very deep about this. So we gonna we gonna fly Jocelyn in. Let's fly let's fly Jocelyn in. See what we could do here. Hold on, let me get let me get my stuff back together. Give me one second. We gonna fly Jocelyn in. What's up? What's up, Jocelyn? Hello, afternoon. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up? Um, what's your what, hold on? What's your what's your what's your thoughts? And this hap- I'm happy to see you back on the show. Thank you so much. Facebook restricted me, so you know, I gotta play the background for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your thoughts on the, on the video when you've seen it? Well, uh, my first thought, and I'm going to go backwards, because the last thing that resonated with me was she told the girl, you're banned from the subway system. How often are we assaulted and no one ever gets banned from the subway system? Mind you, Jenkins got stabbed and they're giving his person a bed at a hospital and accessorized. And here you have a young girl who stated I'm trying to get home from school and she's air quotes banning her from the subway system. First of all, who gave her that authority to do that? That's the first thing. The second thing was I was under the impression that you just get a ticket and you keep on pushing, not you put your hands on someone and like you force them out the system. And clearly in the video, the gate was open. If you look at the video, even when they left out, the gate never swung back closed. The gate was clearly left open, as the station agent said. So it's like, okay, now how did you get to targeting this one person who was walking by herself? Because it's not like you see her in a group with other children. So you had to pinpoint her out to say, okay, you can't come here. And her initial statement was, well, you let everybody else go through. Why can't I go through? Um, You know, the problem is us as parents, we have to stop taking these settlement checks from the city when they do wrong by our kids and demand a change. Because when they cut you a check, you go quiet, you have your little protest, but you're nothing is changing in the NYPD. They just have these continuous acts of um, coming out here, assaulting our children and getting away with it. You know, this is a school age child in an area where I think there's two high schools over there, maybe some other middle school. But I know at that stop you have Lincoln High School and you have Grady High School. So you have, like she said, the crowd control, the kids come out at a certain time. So, of course, you're going to let them through so you could clear the area so neighborhoods and the businesses can like properly operate. But when you have a bigger issue with her being very disrespectful, totally unprofessional. It's up to the parents to have to demand accountability without saying, okay, I'll take a check and let this go away. That's that's correct. And um, this is happening way too often now. And these cops is doing it with impunity. Of course. Now, mind you, the, the all of these other things that's happening, there's so many videos on social media where people are riding the trains 
and you see stuff happening on the trains, people getting robbed on the trains, groped on the trains, letting bugs and all these other things out. So why are you standing at the turnstile? Nothing is, only thing that's happening at the turnstile is they're beating the fare at the turnstile. Go into the system and ride the trains where employees are getting assaulted, homeless people are pulling out their Um, and you know she was totally out of line and I, I hope that this girl parents do not say okay you can pay me for this but demand her job or retraining or whatever the case may be because what she did was totally uncalled for and we all can agree that if, if, if this was a Jewish girl this would have never happened well, obviously, she said you let a bunch of people through before me. So it was happening already at that time. It's not like this girl jumped over the turnstile. She walked through the open door where she seen everybody else walking through the door, which I'm sure she has walked through that door a couple of times if it's in a school area. Do you know how many kids get let out of school at one time? A bunch. I'll pull up to a bus stop and see like 30, 40 kids and just open the doors. I'm not sitting at a stop for a whole bunch waiting for everybody to come through. That's just at how things work after school. So if you see a gate and you go into the system and the gates open and your peers are going through and everybody else, you're going to go through too, especially if that's something you've been doing on a regular basis. Well, so, you heard what you not, heard with the um with the, with the Yeah, she said that they use it for um crowd control. Yeah. Because, again, there's two high schools in the area. So when school let out at 3 o'clock, 2.30, you have uh, hundreds of kids coming through at the same time. Now, if you're going to wait till they clog up the system, flow into the streets, you know, sit around and everything. No, you're going to be like, hurry up and get on a train so you can go home. So obviously she had to be pinpointed out targeted and um for no reason again like you said the girl was well spoken i know if it was me it would have been all type of curses you know back in my <laughs> but you know she was well spoken like you know the woman didn't even really explain nothing from her and again who gave her the authority to ban someone from the system now for Why those hold on real quick for those who just tuned in we're going to play the video again we're going to play the video again Okay. So here go. Oh, we got to start it all over. Hold on a second. Let me get that off the screen. I want to play this video. Uh, loop. Let's see what happens when I put it back live. <laughs> She said, I'm going to count to three. <laughs> You're no longer welcome at this station. I mean, I don't know how you watch this and make an excuse for the cops. And it's a lot of black people blaming it's the parents. Her parents could be lawyers for all they care. Exactly. All they know. And I hate that type of narrative. So everything that happened to a black youth, it's mm -hmm. the parents' fault? The parents didn't raise them right. What happened to this employee 
of the city was not trained properly to deal with the situation. Exactly. So but, could you imagine how the people look at us as far as saying um, New York City transit workers are F-ups, their parents raised them wrong. Can you imagine how management look at us? Mm-hmm. So you know, it's time, crazy. And every time you get a Dan on this job, your mama ain't do a good job raising you. <laughs> Where um, push back from the police when we're assaulted. When have you ever heard of anyone telling anyone who assaulted us, you're no longer welcome in this system? Where is that at? So you tell a teenager who's trying to go home that you're no longer welcome in this system? Are you serious? That's it, exactly it, what they're saying. It's just... The whole, you know, how things are going in this city, it's becoming a, a class war, a racial war. And don't think for any moment, number one, I'm going to say this, there's no good cops because this woman did not act on her own. There was another cop there who allowed her to go on this tirade and did not do anything to stop it pull her to the side to talk to her, tap her shoulder, you know, not that you have to do it publicly, but a little tap on the shoulder, like, yo, chill. Nobody did that. So let's stop with the narrative that there's good police out here. Because in that situation, both police officers were totally wrong. Exactly. Um, the second thing is, again, who gave her the authority? Like, she must have woke up on the wrong side of the bed. But I heard NYPD has unlimited sick days. So if you feel like you waking up and you're in a bitch mode, stay home. Because if that's how you coming into communities, working near high schools and junior high schools and public schools, treating our children, then you definitely don't need to be there. There's other places for you to go. Now, if she feels like she wants to be rough and tough, then take your ass on the train and go find these people that are abusing people on the train. Exactly. You don't have to buy turnstile to do it. So, you know, again, we as people have to stop taking the checks and have to start demanding a, a change, have to start demanding people be fired. Um, have to start demanding policy changes, how they police our community. All these things have to change um, before we start saying, okay, well, she did my kid wrong. I know I'm going to get 100 grand from this situation. Demand the change because that money is coming out of our pockets, the, the residents of the city of New York. The cop not paying nothing. Their, their um, pension fund ain't paying nothing. All of that money is coming from our taxes. So we're relatively paying for the bad behavior that the police has. So we need to start demanding that they have to change and have accountability so we can go forward and move forward as a community. Now, um, a lot of people go on and they always see fault at what the person does. You have to understand in certain situations you're dealing with children. Um, children that's immature, children that have learned behavior from other places, children who see other children doing things. So there has to be some type of empathy to say, you know what, this is a teachable moment, which the cop could have used it as and said, oh, are you coming from school or where are you coming from? Oh, yes, we let certain people come in from whatever school, but her level of aggression was way too high to deal with this situation. Yeah, I agree. Well said. Well said. But, um, I mean, um, yeah, go ahead. Move back to what you opened the show when you talked about social media having your own platform. What people need to understand is, your social media is your social platform and how you use it to spread a spread awareness, raise awareness is on you. Yes, progressive action might, you know, we post things, we have Facebook lives, we have rallies, we have events, but 
it's up to every individual to say, you know, hey, I'm down with the movement. Now I'm going to use my Facebook page, my Instagram, my Twitter to go out and spread the message. There's only one Tramel Thompson. There's only one Jocelyn McCray. There's only one Nuke, Kimberly McLaren. There's only one Ben Valdez and so on and so forth. So if we as individuals decided to say, hey, we're going to all use our social media to put certain messages and images of our people out, then we start to regain control of the narrative. And it's no longer you waiting for ABC or NBC or TWU Local 100 to report something. When you know you're, when you have your information and you know it's factual, share it out. You don't have to wait for one person to come and say, okay, I'm gonna go live. You can make your own live video, you can share it in a group, you can share it on your page, and you can spread the message. If we all start doing that, instead of waiting for one person or a group of people to come and do it, then you know maybe things will start changing faster. But when everybody decides that they're gonna like sit and be on social media warriors and just not just wait for one person, then it slows down the movement and it slows down the message. Obviously, if you're in the group, you're agreeing with the lot that we have, that we're doing, and you agree with what we have going on. So take it a step further and use your platform to spread the message. Use your platform to get others to come to the group and use your platform to get people to start participating in the movement as well. That's crazy. And that's well said. And they should understand uh, after that. I had echo on my headphone. headphones. It's messing me up. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for having me. I got to go. All right. Speak to you later. Bye. All right. That was Jocelyn McCray. You take these headphones off now. Headphones is messing me up, man. I'm hearing doubles. Messing up my speech. Very confusing. But she's right. Um, stop waiting for ABC, NBC, uh, Pix11, and create your own media. Get, get the message out there. Don't wait for me. Don't wait. For anybody on my team, um, get the message out there. Use your social media to the best of your ability, and we're going to help push each other forward and, and things of that nature. Uh, I mean, that cop behavior was very nasty. And speaking of nastiness, this right here is a whole bunch of rats in the refuse room at 42nd Street. This, these are the conditions that our coworkers, the CTAs, have to work in. And um, it's look hazardous to me. You know, picture you going to pull garbage and all those rats jump out and, and po you possibly get bitten or, you know, the diseases that these rats carry, the feces, the urine, and things of that nature. The MTA don't care. They don't care about the workers. They half-heartedly uh, care about the passengers. And um, it's sad. So, you know, speaking of nasty cop behavior, this is the nasty environments that the MTA ignore um, that our workers work in. Now, in other news, other news, as you guys know, um, the MTA pulled the stunt on the union. After the contract was ratified, the MTA now wants to contract ride share services, Uber and Lyft, uh, to pick up the slack that uh, in, in certain parts of the city where the, there's no subway service and there's no bus service after hours. Now, I don't want to hear that the union did not know about this. The union was well aware of this. And I'm going to show you guys how the union was well aware of this. This is a tweet from 2016 from the International. And everybody who don't know, the International president is John Samuelson. John Samuelson was also the local president 
of 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 the union. Now, this tweet is from 6-24-2016. Um, during that time, Samuelson was actually the, the acting president, I believe, of the international and the, the president of the local. Now, he said Uber, which has completely changed the taxi industry, has its eyes on public transit. Now, they, they knew about it from 2016. This wasn't by surprise what the MTA is pulling now because the union already knew. Now, this is what came out in the news two days ago. MTA proposing on-demand transit service for New York City areas with limited overnight bus and train options. Uh. I find this funny, especially to all you yes voters out there. You guys voted yes for a contract, especially buses. They gave y'all an extra dollar for Arctic pay, which was which which you deserve. You deserve more than that. And you guys jumped to the jump to the idea. The MTA lured you guys in, then hit y'all with the hammer. They are now contracting out work that should be handled by surface operators. I didn't think that they would have um, been so bold to actually do this so quick after the ratification of the contract. But they did. And once the union allowed this, because this, the MTA is going to set a precedent. Who's to say that the MTA... In the future, won't limit bus service a little earlier. Instead of instead of um, bus service being limited 10 p.m., 11 p.m. at night, it start being limited at 8, 9 p.m. in some areas. And then they have the Uber, Lyft, the contractors out there um, picking up the rest of the slack. You know, this is a slap in the face to all the bus operators. This is a slap in the face to um, the men and women who can't even who aren't even allowed to work Uber Lyft because of dual employment in the MTA. Um, and they are slowly but surely taking away our work and the union is allowing them to take away our our work because they're not doing their due diligence. They not um, they not uh, doing a research. They not even fighting back on how they supposed to fight back. Now, the union in full damage control after that article dropped. Like I said, that article dropped the uh the fourth, which was two days ago. Um, the union dropped this the day after um the article came out that the MTA is going to start contracting out um work. The international once again put out this tweet. We organize across all transport sectors in America, and we haven't been bashful about saying it. We're in the organizing business. Our goal is to have rideshare drivers become part of the TWU umbrella. Get the fuck out of here! That's some BS. That's some BS, and I'm going to tell you why. In order for them to save face... They are now going to start with a narrative of, don't worry about it. We're going to organize them. They're going to be a part of our team. Um, we're, we're, we're getting stronger as a union. We aren't getting stronger as a union. Yes, they will be collecting more union dues, but they organizing all these workers with no plan in place. We have the biggest local in the whole entire TWU International. We should be the face of organizing and mobilizing, and it just doesn't exist in TWU Local 100. It didn't exist under Samuelson, and it don't exist, definitely don't exist under Utano. So we should be the poster childs of organizing and mobilizing, and it just doesn't exist um, in our union up under these, these guys. Um, who cares if they organizing the ride share um, Drivers. 
That means nothing to a bus operator. All right, you're organizing them, but you still don't you still can't tell the TA you still can't tell the TA how to mobile how, how to make them work. There's nothing that you could do about that. It's not like a TA a bus operator could go could now go um do dual employment and go work for Uber and Lyft and cash in on this this new service that the MTA is providing. So by you saying that um having these uh ride share drivers to become part of the TWU is moot because it means absolutely nothing to the the bus operator who who possibly will be losing the run because we all know that the uh this redesign network is going to make the runs a lot more shorter. It's going to bring a, the runs a lot more closer than to to 8 hours. There's going to be less penalty jobs and things of that nature. Trust me when I tell you it is happening. So we don't want to hear that you're organizing them just to save face. You organizing them means absolutely nothing for the bus operators um, of uh, New York City Transit, TWU. So get the fuck out of here. We don't even want to hear it. Now, who remember this? Who remember this picture right here from my rally? Anybody remember this? Don't poke the bear. You will get smacked. Get the fuck out of here. Now, you could tell standing in this picture next to the bear is T.A. Surface Vice President um, J.P. Patafio. You could tell he watched a lot of cartoons. For them to, to, to think that this was a, a good idea to come on stage with a bear and think that that was a fight back shows you how delusional they are in the reality of things of what a real fight back looks like. How do you bring Smokey the Bear on stage in a serious contract fight, JP? Get the fuck out of here! Now, it's funny. Where's the smack? We still waiting for the smack because the MTA look like they're the ones doing the smacking. The MTA, they're the ones looking like the bear. The MTA has smartened up. They know that you guys aren't radical. They know that you guys don't have no fight back. They know that you guys are not serious. So they pulling out the stunts and saying, what are you going to do about it? You already signed the contract to sold out your members. We know how weak you are. I mean, Utano is not even smart enough. None of these guys is smart enough to even think about approaching progressive action and saying, we need to work together in some form or fashion. Let's, let's meet up. Let's have a conversation. Let's get out all our ill wills and let's figure out how we can grow as a union, how we could fight the MTA as a collective. They don't want that. They don't want that. What they want to do is work with the MTA to get members fired. That's what they want to do. I mean, these guys didn't have me under MTA police investigations. These guys done 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 worked with management in ways that I can't say because it's still going on. But they working with the TA in ways to remove the most radical part of the fight back instead of working together. But this is the union. These, these is how these guys operate, and it's not nothing new. I come from an environment of this type of behavior, and this is actually child's play to me, what they think that they doing. So I'm not really worried about that. But the MTA is really the bear. The MTA is doing the smacking. They not playing around with the union, and they showing the union who's boss. JP. Get the fuck out of here! Take Smokey the Bear back to Party City where you got him from and stop the BS. It's all clown. It's all you look like a clown right now with that. Stop it. All right? 
Stop it. And for you, Tano, how intelligent are you? JP is running around his property. He's running for president. And you're letting him do whatever he want to do. It's no secret. JP is running for president. He should be announcing it very soon. And you guys are letting him do whatever he want to do. But I, I, you know what? They say when the enemy is making a mistake, don't interrupt them. JP breaking apart from Stand United is going to be the end of Stand United. And you guys know it. And it's going to be very interesting um, next election. I'm surprised Utano is letting JP keep all his release reps because they promoting for him. I'm surprised he's doing that. It's, it's, it, but Utano isn't that bright. He's not that bright, you could tell, because he can't be that slow to know that JP isn't running against him. It's, it's pretty obvious. JP didn't even push this contract. He did enough to make you think that he pushed it, but he ain't pushed this contract. He co-signed it. He co-signed it, but he didn't push it. He ain't pushed it like he should have pushed it. That's because he want to use parts of this contract as leverage, as running points for when he do run. But we're not going to allow him to do that. We're not going to allow him to do that. He would have to be honest, completely honest, and say that he he went along. He he went along. What they say? Go along to get along. That's what he did. He have to be very honest to say why he did what he did and and the role that he played in selling out this membership and pushing contracts. And I just don't get JP because even if he wasn't pushing his contract. He damn sure is pushing de deconsolidating the maintenance um, part of the buses in the union. So I would love to see how he would get away with that one. I would love it. I would love it. I would love to see how he's going to get away with that. And I mean, listen, we have to wake up. We have to wake up. Because this is becoming very embarrassing. These reps is doing whatever they want to do, how they want to do it, and when they want to do it. And who's paying the pipe before it? It's the members. Now, as much as I don't agree with you, Tano, as much as I don't agree with JP, as much as I don't agree with Yates recently, and I don't think I ever agreed with, with Richie Davis much because he's a black Republican. For the betterment of the union, and if they was forthcoming and being honest and wanted to have honest dialogue and things of that nature, I would work with them. But the main reason why they don't want to work with me is because they know they can't lie to me. They know they can't buy me. Um, and there's nothing that they could do. It's nothing that they could do to persuade me to lie to the members. And that's what ultimately stops them. It would, they would have to stop being corrupt in order to work with me. I'm willing to work with anyone if it's about furthering um, the membership furthering our causes. We just we just settled a contract, and we didn't move forward. We didn't get any gains that we could take home to our families and say, "Hey, our union kicked the MTA ass," and I'm happy to be a part of Local 100. They have done anything. Their whole narrative, if you listen closely, was the MTA tried to take everything, and we held on to whatever we could help. We we. We held on to what we could hold on to, and uh, that's it. They didn't say we kicked the door on, on a TA and we took this from them. They whole narrative was saying that we stopped the TA from taking stuff that we gained over 50, 60 years. We didn't get no gains, nothing. Everything we got was a concession or the TA took. Bottom line, this, this union... 
uh, leadership is very weak. The ideology is weak. It's about time that they step into the 20th century. They live in the 19th century fighting a, a, a 21st century fight. That's just not how it works. It's just not how it works. And as long as we refuse to call out Cuomo and hold Cuomo accountable, we will continue to get the same exact results. Now, I want to put this um, quote on the screen from Frederick Douglass. He said, if there is no struggle, there is no progress. Those who profess the favor of freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without um, plowing the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. They want the ocean without the awful roar of its many waters. This struggle may be a moral one, or it may be a physical one, or it may be both moral and physical, but it must be a struggle. That quote is so powerful. And it obviously goes over a whole bunch of people head. Especially the part with that says, those who profess the favor of freedom and yet depreciate agitation are men who want crops without plowing up the ground. They want rain without thunder and lightning. Do you understand those words? Don't think that um, we're going to get anything peaceful. Don't think that um, coddling our union leadership is going to get us anything substantial. They must be challenged. They are not war ready. No matter how many times they write that on flyers, they are not war ready. Think about it like this. Most of the people who's leading our union, they are um, in their 50s. Most of the people who's leading our union is in their 50s. Can y'all, and, I, and, I'm not, and I'm not trying to do ageism or nothing like that. But in any war, in any fight, in any sport where you have to boots to the ground because this union stuff, you need boots to the ground. You need to go out there. You need people who is not willing to sleep to get the message out there. In what arena do you see a whole bunch of people in their 50s and 60s leading? Do you see the army trying to recruit people that's in their 50s and 60s? Do you see the basketball, bas uh, NBA trying to recruit people in their 50s and 60s? They even hiring coaches at a younger age. Do you see the NFL? Where do you see that they correlate being older with being knowledgeable and being a fighter? This union need new, young, tireless leadership. New People who's willing to fight. People who's willing to work 22 hours a day. Not someone like Utano who said he couldn't come to uh, Brother Jenkins, come see him in the hospital because it was Easter and he was spending time with family. We don't need that type of leadership. We need leadership that's going to put the workers first. We need that type of leadership. We need leaders who's going to go to the, to, the, to the end of the line for members. And a great example of that is Chris Drummond, the vice chair of um, Conductors Towers. I don't think that nobody outworks him. He's fearless. He doesn't play. And we need more reps like him. He's a great example of that. Shout out to, the, um, shout out to Brother Drummond. But I'm gonna I'm I'm play this video again because this video, this video made me so upset, so upset, man. I'm not doing anything. You're no longer welcome to someone. 
Yeah. Are you serious? That's exactly right, yeah. You really want to do that? Exactly right, yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. You're I don't understand how we not upset about that. I don't understand how anyone can defend that and put that on the parents. Um, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta do, we gotta do better as a community. We we really do. Um, we 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 are really the only set of people on earth um, who have a fetish for defending the oppressors. We have a fetish for defending the oppressors um and they not only targeted at the adults they targeted at our youth too um for everyone who's condemning this young lady and condemning her parents to say that she wasn't raised right i really hope i really really hope that nothing happens to your child i really hope that your child is walking the straight and narrow because we're going to remember these comments that you said, we're going to remember that you blamed it on the parents, like as if there's no overzealous cops out there and you could comply and still get your butt whipped. You could comply and still get shot. You could comply and still get arrested. You could comply and still get maced or tased. You could comply and still be arrested innocently. I really hope that your child is not a victim of that. So we could point the fingers back at you and say, why didn't you raise your child right? You guys should be embarrassed. It's very despicable that you would think that. And the fetish you have, the fetish you have for defending your oppressor is ugly. It's insane. You should be embarrassed. And people is right. You defending this, you'd be deleted out the group. And go start your own group, your, your own righteous group. Your own righteous group. Talking about, oh, she should have had her past. She, 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 she feel entitled. This is a high school student. How can she feel entitled? You got people who's 50 years old, 60 years old, saying that this child feels entitled. You got people 50, 60 years old saying that she should have had her past. She's a teenager. We all know. We all know that I heard this a million times from plenty of parents. If your head wasn't screwed onto your body, you would lose that too. How many times have you heard that? If your head wasn't screwed onto your body, you would lose that too. So y'all condemning this youth for losing her Metro card, possibly losing her Metro card because we don't know. But y'all condemning her for that? Oh, she fell entitled. She should have had her Metro car. Her parents should have did a, a better job. You guys are so embarrassing having a fetish of protecting your oppressors instead of your brother and sister who's being abused day in and day out, blaming on the parents, blaming on the child. If you want to be technical, it's supposed to be a community thing. It ain't supposed to be about your household. It take what they say. Um... It takes a community with somebody. I forgot how it go, but we not thinking community wise. We thinking individual. We thinking only our family. We not thinking about the community. So if this child reside in your community and is your neighbor, live in the next building or house from you, you are responsible also, not just that parent. You guys should really be embarrassed right now of the position that you're taking on this situation. 100% embarrassed. It's so it's like, uh, man, it's crazy. What Harry you tell me and said, got to stop arguing with people. I would have shot. She said something to that effect. Like, I get it. I get it. I get it. I mean, I'm I'm just gonna stop arguing with y'all. Like y'all opinions is based on um, Stockholm syndrome. We don't operate over that over here. We don't. We don't. We don't. That's not a part of our our situation at all. Now, for those who want to support the platform, um, feel free to make a donation um, through Cash App, Progressive Action 100, PayPal, Progressive Action. That's in the link of this video. 
and we have something called Patreon. Your donations is highly appreciated. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.